them despite being eliminated today? Um, as an individual, um, yeah, I think I showed that for me, like, uh, that I deserve to be here. Um, you know, we, I mean, for me, I still, you know, I, I wanted to win the tournament, obviously. Um, it's sad that we were out, but I think just making it here in the first place was really big for me and also the team. Um, you know, we're playing with, a uh, with Patty who subbed in, like we, we had a lot of challenges, especially with Ryan's just being playing online, not being at bootcamp and everything. Um, so yeah, it was it was a difficult like run, but we made it this far, which I'm really happy about. And yeah, individually, I'm I'm pretty happy with how I performed. So yeah. Thank you. Uh, let's go to remote media questions. First question from Ganesh at stream. Hi, uh, this is for Coach Neil. First of all, commiseration for the loss. Uh, you guys played amazing. It felt like you could win the game. And it was your first series. Your first series as a team, first international event. And it still felt like Heretics could have won and gone the long way. My question is, how was the experience for you and like everyone was playing since the crowd was uh, crowd was cheering you on? First of all, how was the experience? Second, what, what were the challenges you guys faced during the event? Yeah, so I mean, I think playing in front of a home crowd um, at like a, a major event was insane for everyone. Like the fans were crazy. Um, they supported us through, you know, the the good times, the bad times, um, and yeah, it was just insane to be able to hear it. We're sorry we can go all the way, but I think we showed in the games today, like in against Sentinels, we could have, you know, like we've not played against poor teams. Uh, Sentinels are probably one of the favourites to win the event, and you know, Paper X were grand finalists and champions six months ago, so. We've not played against bad teams, um, and it's a huge experience for everyone here. This is pretty much everyone, I think, first yeah. major event. So, yeah, everyone's learned a lot from it, and we're only gonna we're only gonna improve from here. We already fixed a lot of our issues from the Sentinels game overnight. Like that was in you know less than twenty four hours. Give us another three months, and I'm sure we'll be back here again. Yeah, and ready to actually you know win the whole thing. Yeah, thank you so much. Next question from Johan Esports Driven. Thank you. Uh, my question is for anyone who wants to answer. Uh, you guys played amazing Varen so far. Um, so what did you learn so far that will help you during the regular the regular season? Who wants it? You want me to take it or do you want to take it, Benji? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. You can take it then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, we played nice Valorant. That's what we've been preaching. Um, as coaches and everyone in the team believes in it, that's why we built this team. We wanted to, you know, play a nice Valorant and not stick to the meta and be innovative. And I think we've done that. Um, I think especially on you know maps like Sunset. So, yeah, for us, like as coaching staff, we've learned a lot. Preparation was really, really good um, going into kickoff. And I think with the time limits we've had, um, we could have done better. To be fair, so that's something that we've learned as coaching staff. And for the players, I'm sure it's just being on that stage um, and also the, the effort they've put in is crazy. So yeah, I've learned as a coach how incredible my players are and I'm sure they've all learned as well how incredible they are to each other as teammates. So it's only positive. Amazing, thank you. Next question from Brandon Esports GG. Uh, thank you very much. To kind of follow up on that, you know, you mentioned just how incredible your players are. We saw a lot of pop-off moments individually uh, from your players, uh, Neil Zeno, against Paper Rex. So I'd just like to kind of ask you uh, what your thoughts are on the pop-off potential compared to the team play that the team has shown and kind of what areas might be able to bring those both to the same level. Yeah, I think uh, I've always believed, and I think it's it's just one of those things that when – your players are comfortable and you this team plays part of it, right? But when you're comfortable as a team, that's where it allows people to express their individual skill. Um, I don't want to, I, I, we don't want to be the kind of team like Paper X where you're just running around and taking jewels. We want to take smart jewels and it's a lot harder to do, but it's a lot more consistent. So that's what we're going to achieve. Um, the hardest part is having the individual skill to do it and we've got it. So it's literally just time and process. That's, that's all it is. It just takes time. But every single one of these players has shown how good they are individually. Um, and they deserve to be here. So they will just get better and better. They're all super young. 
Thank you. Next question from Pedro. Hey guys, uh, likewise, commiserations on, on the serious loss. I got a question for Boo. Um, when well, the, the series went into a tie on the halftime and the third map of the series, but then from then on, um, Paper X has kind of snowballed the lead away from you guys. I'm kind of wondering on how, what made that happen in such a way that heretics weren't able to rebound um and and wins in split you know what were kind of, what were the kind of challenges that you saw uh within the team taking on paper x i mean we're talking about our attack right so i think it was just moments when the fight happened like on first two rounds and on, i think on the fourth round like the mid pushes the the round fights like it's just the fights that happened I feel like, I mean, they obviously won them, but also maybe we're not as ready as we should have been. Um, I also think that my calls could have been better on attack. Um, I didn't do the best calls. Um, so it's just combination, like it, like it's mostly props to them um, because they kind of abused the fights that are comfortable for, for them and we gave it to them. So yeah, I think that's what happened. Um, firstly, really nice try today. My question is to whoever would like to answer. So Paper X, before this, they've been running a triple delist comp this year on split. Was that the comp that you were prepared for heading into this? Did you expect the change about with the sky coming in? And do you think that it was just uh, not being able to win the individual fights like you said that led to the loss? Or was it the team comp that caused a little bit of a wrench in the works? I can answer if you want. Um, I mean, for us, like, we're aware Paper X, you know, we, we were aware of, you know, Triple Jewelist comp, like, we were prepared to face that, but we're also, you know, we're very aware that it's very easy for them to just change comps or change an agent. Um, we're prepared for, you know, any any swaps, like, we always make sure we're prepared for stuff like this. Um, I think a lot of it was, you know, we didn't, they, they just, they took advantage of when we made mistakes, and, yeah, that's just... This is how it goes sometimes. Um, uh, but yeah, we, we, we're ready for anything, you know. We, we, we weren't surprised that they, you know, changed your list uh, is what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Next question from Arnob the Spike. Hi, guys. Uh, first of all, commiseration on the loss. Uh, my question is open for everyone. I just want to understand, like, uh, you guys picked the Neon over other duelists in most of the maps uh, is it something that is minimal most comfortable with or do you guys find more value out of neon compared to other duelists you want me to take it or do you want to take it i can answer yeah um i think it's a um, complex answer uh first of all it wasn't really minimal like he's comfortable playing any duelist um but the thing is, he's so good on Neon that, like, the things he does reactively raises skill ceiling of Neon a lot. And, like, when we tried Neon on Lotus or Sunset, like, we saw how impactful he is, like, not with the strategies that we put on, you know, on Wall of Lands and, like, you stand here, you stand here. No, it's about his own decisions uh, reactively. And we saw how good he is. So that's mainly the reason he plays it. And then the second reason I think it's, I mean, nobody really plays it. Maybe some teams here and there, so it's hard to play against. People are not used to countering Neon. They maybe are not fully aware, like, what can happen, what stunts are, like, dangerous to them, how fast he can run sometimes, like, how impactful is the ball sometimes. So it's a combination of his own skill and the, you know, the unpredictability of the agent. Thank you. Next question from Pedro. Yes, I got a question for, for Minibu. Um looking to focus back onto the map three, of course, you know, you didn't put a you did not put a, a very good performance relative to the other maps that you uh 
performed in the tournament going six and fourteen KD. I just want to know um, what kind what were the, what was the biggest struggle that you faced uh, in split against Paper X from your point of view and, and how difficult was it for you to just kind of play um it, it, in that way it, in such a in such a form. I'm not actually gonna let him answer that question because as a coach I don't care about his KD. It's not an important question. It's not something I want to focus on. Um we lost the Paper X because they were a better team and we had, you know, we lost as a team. It's nothing to do with Minibu. Um, if you want to ask how amazing he played the entire event and how he proved he's one of the best duelists in the event, go for it. But I'm not going to let you guys ask any questions about individual performances because this is a 5v5 team game and we lost as a team. So, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions in the room? Look what you did. Yeah, I'm not that uh, horrible that you guys can ask questions, <laughs> just not stupid ones. Hello, guys. Here, Theo from Sons of KS from Latin America. First of all, um, sorry for your loss, but despite of the result, you've been doing a great performance these Masters. Uh, what do you have to say to all the teams that were, that were watching you and that you will be facing in uh, the next uh, VCT EMEA, which may be aware of what you're bringing there? Um, yeah, I think teams need to be scared of us. I think we've proved that just by coming here. You know, the way we played in kickoff to qualify to Masters, um, we proved it there. And I think the way we performed at Masters was also, like, well, like, really good. Um, just like we, we made a lot of mistakes, um, and if we, like, we have time to improve on those mistakes before uh, the first split starts. So, yeah, I think um, if we keep up the improvement, um, like at the rate that we are, because we're improving very quick, very fast, then um, yeah, I think teams are going to be sh should be should be very scared of us. Again, uh, sorry for the loss, and I hope to see you guys again in Shanghai. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have another question that's to you, Coach. Um, so for this event and for uh, a lot of games in EMEA, we did have pa uh, Paritech playing for the team. So um, I think that everyone, everyone, everyone can agree that the, these five are like fantastic together. So are you? Uh, do you have any idea about what's the situation? What the situation is going to be in the upcoming split or for future events? Uh, yeah, so like, I mean, it's, thanks for asking, especially about Patty, because I want to give Patty a massive shout out. Uh, he is incredible, an incredible teammate, incredible player, someone I've respected for a very long time, and I'm super glad that he got to show everyone on the stage what he can do. Um, the impact that Patty's had, like we've, I've seen a lot of people say, you know, we've been practicing with him for three, four months. We had about three and a half, you know, weeks preparation before kickoff started. So the impact that he's had on the team. Um, I can't, I can't explain how insane it is, and he can do that to to any team, you know. Um, that being said, like Patty did come in as a stand-in, um, he will still be with us for um, the split. Um, I'm not entirely sure contract-wise how that's going to look, but you know, he uh, will will be playing also. But Patty will also be staying with us. Um, it will be playing against the the first team that we play in the split because Minibu has exams still. So. Um, yeah, there, there's a big chance that Patty will be, you know, in and out, um, helping us out again. Uh, but, yeah, I, I don't know. I just can't see, I can't express how happy I am to have him in the team. Um, we love having him, so, uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'm Nemo from 3 uh, Thank you for answering the invitation. Uh, the first question is for Benji Fishy. Uh, you play very, very well in the two last map. I understand that this is a team play, but the question is for you because uh, you make the comeback with Lotus, no? uh, the team, and um, as team you uh, fight until the final. No? And the question is what was the change in, the, in, uh, the change in mind to make the comeback uh, uh, the change in the Lotus for fight to map to um i think you know a lot of it is just kind of sometimes we maybe lose focus of you know and maybe our team play slips up i think 
um, refocusing and making sure, you know, we're playing together as a team. We're not taking individual fights. Um, stuff like this, we're being drilled on it, you know, by Neil and Boo and Weber. Just like, we've been very, we, we've always tried, you know, ever since we, you know, lost at Red Bull against, you know, just against uh, Foot and Focus and <laughs> lost against UCAM, like, we've been very focused on team play. And, but so we're, we're obviously not perfect. So I think a lot of it is kind of just making sure that we are playing to the standards that we're playing. Because I think when we do start losing, like, it's because our, you know, team play or our standard kind of drops um, to how we want to play. So I think a lot of it is just kind of refocusing. And I think we're, we've shown that we can do that, you know, because I think it's for every team, right? Every team's going to not play perfectly every single game. And it's just how, how you can refocus. Um, I think we do that very well. Okay, the other question is for Wu. Uh, or someone wa who wants to answer is because you have a lot of uh, support in Spain and especially, uh, for example, all in the Miss World Channel, you have more than 52,000 of viewers, uh, for example. And the question is if you have uh, some message for the, for, for the fans and especially for the fans that stayed in the, in the venue support, no? uh, like the Balco or other fans. So the question is, if, what do I have to say to that? If you have a message for the fan, in, uh, for the future, for the, this year with the team. I mean, first of all, obviously, thank you for supporting us. Like, we saw it even after the loss, like everybody was cheering for us. It's amazing. And I mean, what can I say? What, what, can, I, what can I say about the future of the team? Is like, we're going to keep working the same, with the same methods. We're going to keep progressing. Um, like, as I said before, I actually, I said it in the interview, never mind. Like, our goal is to play perfect Valorant. It's obviously not possible, but we are going to work as hard as possible to get close to that. And, yeah, I, I think you can expect us improving. And, yeah, thank you for the support. Yeah. And the last one is for Minibu. In, in the kickoff and in this... Uh, in this uh, tournament in general, you have an incredible for performance for me and for a lot of people. Um, uh, for example, the people that follow you uh, since the Spanish League, you know, like I me mean, or like a lot of uh, part of the community are very proud of you. Therefore, uh, for you, is if you have a message for the other players that stayed in the regional league and in your, uh, like your situation in the last year, a message for them because uh, you are an example for all of us. I didn't understand. Uh, I didn't understand the question. It's only that a lot of players of the regional league are in the um, similar situation that you, the last year, and you are an example for them. They are so proud because I am speaking with a lot of them. And um, if you have a message for for them, uh, in order to uh, achieve the the thing that you know, go to the tier one and play in an incredible performance like in the kickoff and in a lot of matches in this event, not like you. I mean, the message is that tier one, tier two, like it doesn't matter in what tier you play. You should play to learn. You should play to improve, and you have to gain something from every match you do, make your own like uh, uh, conclusions. And it doesn't matter what area you play, you just have to play to improve and you have to like just stay disciplined uh, and eventually you're gonna play in the highest level if, you, if you're worth uh, of it. Just like, it doesn't matter what area you play. You have to always improve yourself and uh, develop yourself keep like working hard like the hardest part is is not playing in the highest tier the hardest part is like when you i don't know like when you're in tier two you're playing tracks every day like that uh, monotony like uh, routine you have to grind it you have to keep doing that and don't give up on yourself and just develop yourself Okay, thank you, you and all the team for representing the Spanish uh, community, the Spanish teams. Uh, we are very proud of you, and this is only the beginning. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. And that's all the time we have. Thank you so much, Team Heretics. Um, we'll see you next time, hopefully. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, Mike. Cheers.